My name is Neve O'Malley and I'm based here in a very beautiful three-year studio that I have in Temple Bar Galleries and Studios in Dublin. Um, but I would say that I'm actually from Mayo and I think that's important to <laughs> iterate. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't encounter any art in my childhood, so it wasn't until adulthood that I visited my first gallery or museum. Um, I grew up in the west of Ireland, and there, at that point there was very little access to such things. Um, but there were a lot of books at home and an interest in music, and I was probably um, interested in reading and writing as much as I was in drawing, but very, very interested in drawing. So it wasn't until secondary school that my idea of art expanded with a good teacher there. And um, yeah, but I didn't see any art in person, I think, until I went to visit Emma, which had just opened with my dad as I was going for an interview for art college. I think I wanted to be an artist from very early on, and it was quite a broad idea of what that would be in my head, but also no sense of what it meant at all. Um, so I knew I liked the areas such as writing and drawing and those things. And in secondary school, it just became really clear that that was the space I enjoyed most. Um, but I had no sense of what it meant to be an artist at all. I, I actually thought when I applied for fine art that it meant detailed art. Um, I had no conception of it. I had never met an artist or, or, or been involved in it. So, um, yeah, it was, it was secondary school. It was a, there was a sense that if this was a possibility, then that's what I would like to do. Yeah, I made a portfolio and um, I applied to every art college in the country. And my poor father drove me around the entire island to interviews. At the time, you had to do interviews for every, every college. And, uh, and then I had to make a choice about where I was going to go. And I ended up going to Belfast, unusually, from Mayo in the early 90s. Yeah, my idea of what an artist was was quite narrow, I would say. It was um, maybe sitting in a room drawing. <laughs> and, um, and I certainly had no idea about what it meant to make an exhibition or to make your work public. Um, I probably thought I would make drawings and then I would try and sell them. Um, in, in reality, of course, there's a, there's a huge world out there that's where you have to become quite um, efficient at lots of different things, at, at uh, talking about your work, at thinking about around it and different materials, at writing um, applications for funding, <laughs> and, um, at managing other producers. Um, it's, it's just so much more elaborate than I could ever have imagined and so much better and bigger than I ever imagined, actually. So in the end, I think it's been a positive journey in that sense. There's a lovely space where you start to imagine what something might be and you get a feeling for something you want to make and it might not, it doesn't come in like an image. <laughs> you know, there isn't this idea, this final work that appears in my head that I then um, just generate or make. It's, it's more a sense that I want an, ob an object or a sculpture or a drawing to feel a certain way and I want it to maybe lie flat on the ground and in a certain curve and, and have a certain weight to it and, and I'll get excited about knowing that that's important to do and there's a space before you deal with the actual difficulties of having to do it and before you realise the complications of making something function or, or, or the weight of it or the practicalities of the materials, there's this really exciting space where you know that you're going to do it and you hope that you can make it work in the way that it feels to you in your head. Bizarrely, it's to do with the uncertainty of it in that I don't know what the next few months will bring. And that means that I constantly find myself in quite unusual situations. So I decide to make a film in a quarry and I find myself, you know, getting to know all these people who work in a quarry and watching large chunks of limestone being cut off a wall by a diamond saw. Or I um, decide to, to make work on the island of Loch Derg in, in Donegal and I'm in, on a you know, in a frozen lake in winter, 
going across to this pilgrimage island and wandering through the dormitories thinking what has brought me here <laughs> and isn't this wonderful <laughs> and the people that you meet um, because often that you can't realize things on your own I mean it's kind of um, absurd to think that you can do everything particularly when you use a lot of different materials like I do so I have to bring in um, a camera person or I have to bring in um, somebody who can work well with stone or with wood and those relationships and where they bring me and the things I learn and the ideas they then generate, I think um, they're really wonderful things about being an artist because you don't, and travel as well, yeah, lots of things. <laughs> so <laughs> the travel in particular um, that I get to end up in, you know, villages or cities or landscapes that I, I've never seen or I never even thought of going to um, and that the work brings me there. typical in the sense that I, um, my family life, I, ha I have a son, so that creates a certain structure and routine in your, in your world, which is probably not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So I tend to get up at the same time and get to the studio at the same time and leave. You know, so I work very nine to five at the moment um, in relation to, to that side of my life. But beyond that, when you're in the middle of a show, uh, uh, producing work for an exhibition, there's, there's, uh, there's parts of it where the work is really in production and it's all about making. But then there's other parts um, when you're developing new work, which might be more about reading and, and thinking around ideas and drawing out ideas and um, uh, just, just going to visit a site or a location and trying to find people who can who can help you with the work um, so there's very different phases i would say um, during uh, months and years of, of making yeah what i'm currently working on um, well i've just returned <laughs> from a very probably one of the biggest shows of my life so i'm trying to gather myself and think about getting back to work in, in the studio, which is is really exciting. The, I've just um, created a, a large exhibition for the Venice Biennale, and it opened um, two weeks ago. Um, so we will also be bringing that work back, and we're going to do something quite exciting in that the work, because the work was very much made um, in relation to the site uh, at, at the Biennale and this wonderful, beautiful, ancient room that it's located in. When I bring it back to Ireland, I want to rethink it in, in that sense. So I may um, augment that work with another new piece or two and, and bring in some older works. So I'm thinking about the touring of the, the work from Venice and trying to see how I can be creative about that and how it can be interesting for everybody because it's not the same. You're not going to see the same show because it's not Venice. <laughs> so you'll see something else here, but hopefully better or, or just as interesting in each of the venues. Um, and I'm really excited to just get back to, to playing with materials and, and thinking about where the recent work has brought my own um, understanding of, of the materials I use and see how I can move on from that because it's not a kind of it's not cut and dry. You don't make work and you, you draw a line and now you suddenly conjure new work. It's like it's all a, a kind of continuity. So, so the work in Venice has led me to new thinking and to new ideas and I want to bring those forward now.